Hey, podcaster. I'm Tim Albert, your podcast performance coach, with not just one, but five actionable tips to grow your authority and convert with ease. It's my four-part series covering my top podcasting tips on marketing, performance, tech, and content. This is part three of four. Part one was marketing, and part two, my last episode, was on your personal performance. Make sure to check out those episodes if you haven't already, and subscribe, will ya? You will make my day. Thank you for that. Okay, you've created an amazing podcast and you want to get some traction, but for some reason, no one is listening. They want to, but they can't. Why? Because your show sounds like shit. Hi, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome to the show. Can you come closer. Uh, you're, you're joining us from the car today, it sounds like. Oh, that's better. Well, that's nice. Glad you made time for me. That sounds great. Okay, so that's my guest. That's weird. I can't imagine why you're not getting any downloads. I wonder what it could be. What does the sound quality of your show say about your brand or your business? Does it say quality? I started in radio nearly 30 years ago, so my ears are very sensitive to crap. I won't listen to a show that sounds like it was recorded on the phone or in an airplane hangar. I just won't do it because if you don't care about your show, why should I? Today, it's all about my top five tech tips for podcasting. And yes, I have links in the show notes for you too. Tech tip number one, the basics. You're not a podcaster if you don't have a microphone. I said it. It's the one and only piece of equipment you need to have to be a podcaster. If you want to be taken seriously, I'd also be getting the proper pop screen or windsock to go along with it to reduce some of your plosives, a proper mic stand so you're not hand-holding your mic, maybe that looks like a boom arm, and you also want a decent set of headphones, not earbuds, wired headphones so you can put over your ears so you can hear the real quality of your show. The background noise, your lip smacking, your guest's dog breathing on their lap, <laughs> Technical tip number two, expensive microphones don't fix poor technique. Production rule number one, shit in is shit out. So now that you've got a mic, you need to know how to use that microphone. It might be a simple USB microphone, or you might level up to a sexy mic like you see Joe Rogan use, and you think that's all you need because he's using it. Not so fast. There's more to it because now you need a different interface and likely a few more attachments to go along with that big fancy microphone. And there are so many people I see because they have a podcast on YouTube that are using their mics wrong. They're literally talking into the wrong part of the mic. You can sound incredible with a $100 mic that you use properly with good mic technique and an ideal environment. It's all you need. Your hollow, thin, echoey audio, it's not your mic's fault. You may just need to make a few adjustments in how you record, and you can sound 10 times better than you already do. The third technical tip is software. For solo podcasters, if you want free, Audacity is still a very good piece of software that many podcasters use, and they do big productions with it. It likely has more tools than you'll ever use if you've got clean audio going into it. It's all you need. Stick with whatever piece of software you choose, and you'll get better at it with time. If you're still using Zoom to connect with guests for your podcast, consider upgrading. There are way better options that provide studio-like audio quality. And the great thing about these platforms is that you have the video option too. So it's nice to be able to see your guest for that more personal conversation, but you might also want to grab a short video clip for an episode promo. If your guest has a mic too, you'll both sound amazing, provided you have the right settings and you know how to use your mics. Tech tip number four, leave it to somebody else. If you want to take most of the technical stuff off of your plate, hire a podcast editor. Check out episode 142 on why and how you should hire a podcast editor. A good one will make sure you're doing all the right things on your end so their job is easier. At least, that's what they should be doing. But you still have to press record and make sure you talk into the right end of the microphone. But you may want to outsource the rest of it if you can afford it and you want to spend more time doing other things for your business. And tech tip number five, test. 
For the love of Sam. Who the hell is Sam anyway? For S Sam's sake, test. Test your audio and test your guest's audio. It takes less than 60 seconds and you could save a whole lot of grief. The worst thing you can do is have an incredible interview with someone and you both sound like you're talking from the hull of a ship. Everyone's done it. So what do you do? Will you reschedule? Your guests might not like that, so you don't even ask. Or you lie and you tell them you lost your recording, covering up the fact that you had the wrong settings. Or you just publish this crappy audio because it's all you've got and you need a show this week. Just hit record. Say what you had for breakfast or ask your guests what you had for breakfast and then press stop. Download or save the track and then listen to it. Are you guys both on mic? Is it clean? It takes less than one minute to do this. Nobody does this, and I don't know why. Email me if you do a test every time you record. I would love to know, and I would love to meet you. Each software platform that you'll likely be recording on usually has only two settings, input and output. Play around with these things. You've got to know what they do. Try all the settings to see what works. Then create a little cheat sheet for yourself so you can't mess it up. And pay attention to these settings every time you connect or record. Assume they've changed. It's your job to check these settings every single time. There are my top five tech tips. Number one, you need a real microphone to be a podcaster. Number two, you need to know how to use that microphone and be in the right room. Number three, pick the right software, Audacity or Riverside, Squadcast or Zencaster. Number four, hire an editor if it's taking too much of your time. And number five, T is for test. Do a simple test to avoid big headaches later. I'm going to throw in number six just because I'm thinking about it. And the internet connection is really, really important. If you can be wired, that's huge. At least on your end, you'll solidify that connection much better and have fewer dropouts. If you want to know what equipment I recommend and use, plus the links to the software and the equipment that I love, go to my resources page on my website, podcastperformancecoach.com slash resources. I'll put a link in the show notes. Just scroll down in the podcast app and you can get it there. And again, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. The audio quality of your show speaks volumes about the quality of your brand and your business. Raise the bar because good enough doesn't cut it anymore. And I hope those are just the tips you need. Is your podcast audio hurting your show? Do you even know the difference between good and bad audio? Let's do a little experiment. Book a free 15 minute coaching call with me and I'll put your show through the ringer. Let's click around on some of your episodes to see if we can improve anything. Your audio, your guest's audio, the mix, editing, levels, volumes. This is playtime for me. I love this stuff. Don't deprive me of this. Book your free 15-minute coaching call at podcastperformancecoach.com. I'm Tim Walbert. See ya.